feel really awful. I was almost sick before I told her I had to let her go. It's the hard side of running a business, Zoe. Jennifer should have realised if the practice can't afford her, then she had to go. I still feel awful. It's not as if she ever let me down or anything. Then give her a glowing reference and she shouldn't have any trouble getting another job. Dad, she cried. It's understandable. I said that if the business picked up, I'd let her know and take her back, but it's pretty grim at the moment. You shouldn't have said that. Best to make a clean break. And if the practice improves in the future, then you should get in touch. Give her a break, Frank. I've known you lose sleep when you've had to lay men off the following day. It's a hard thing to do, so give her some sympathy. Even better, buy a lunch. That's a great idea. Are you free? To be honest, I don't feel like socialising after sacking Jennifer. OK. And it's an open-ended offer. What about you, Kim? Yep. Sorry, blacksmith's on his way. Yeah, looks like I'll be sipping orange juice on my own, then. Anybody want anything from the village? No, thanks. Why don't you call in and see Chris? And you can ask him if he wants to do it. And I'll ask Zoe. Do what? I thought you were going to ask him to be your best man. You've named the day, then. Yes. Saturday, 22nd of October. <laughs> and I hope you'll be my chief bridesmaid. I'd love to. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry to waste your time, Zoe. I thought it was worth you taking a look. Oh, don't worry. It's worth checking. So, how are you going to manage without young Jennifer, then? It's a case of having to. Just couldn't afford her. I need somebody good, but cheaper. The impossible. Oh, I don't know. I might be able to put you on to somebody. Who? Well, Ned's working for me. His wife's helping out in the wool pack, and they're desperate for money. They've got a young daughter, Linda. She's 16, farm, born and bred, and from what I can see, she's very good with animals. Could be a capable assistant for you. I have a word with her. Well, nothing to lose, have you? Maybe an assistant I can afford to gain. Thanks. <laughs> well, that's what good neighbours are for. What do I owe you for the visit? Let's just call it quits, shall we? Oh, if you're sure. Well, if this young Linda turns out to be what I'm looking for, then it's been a worthwhile trip. You've got a bigger appetite than the beast of Beckendale. <laughs> was it the beast that killed those sheep? No, oh, who knows. If I had to put money on it, I'd say it was a big dog. Probably some townie dumping a mattress and giving his housebound pet a well-deserved run. Mm. Jack can't lose any more sheep. He's having a bad year. Good job he doesn't have to feed you, then. Didn't you have any lunch? I did. A couple of sandwiches. And guess who I saw leaving the wool pack together? Thick as thieves. Well, go on. Eric Pollard and Betty Eggleton. Is that all? Hardly front page of the tabloid, is it? When you've a nose for business like I have, you learn to spot the dangerous liaisons. So you don't think it was a tete-a-tete in the romantic <laughs> sense, then? No. Seth would have Eric's guts for garters. Beast of Beckendale would be a little pussycat compared. <laughs> you don't really think that he could build a private prison, do you? Not one in a million. I'd stop him getting planning permission. Did you go and see Chris? I did. And he's agreed to be my best man. Here's to us. All of us. Cheers. Cheers. 